Good morning and thank you. You know, Senator Labor, as I heard you talk about the issues with regard to um, Pay Equity Day, I thought, what would happen if women just stayed home until our pay equity was reached? For me, that means I would be volunteering my services to all of you and the residents of the great state of California until August. And as chair of the Budget Committee, since the budget is due June 15th, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be a problem. Um, but if you think about it, if all women stayed home until we hit equal pay, the impact that would have on the fifth largest economy in the world, it would be significant. Child care has been struggling, quite frankly, in the state of California since the Great Recession. Families from a broad spectrum of income and resources have struggled with identifying and securing quality, reliable, and affordable child care. Wait lists, lack of providers, lack of credentialed care have defined the search for child care as parents try to remain in and return to the workforce. The Women's Caucus has prioritized a package of bills for child care that addresses each of these shortcomings, affordability, availability, and stability. Senator Leva's SB 174, the Child Care Stabilization Formula. It reforms the current bifurcated rate system and an inadequate reimbursement rates with a single regionalized state reimbursement system for child care, preschool, and early learning services. People often like to use the term that our child care system is broken. I disagree with that. Somehow, some way, millions of children find their way to child care every day in this great state allowing family members to go to work. Can it be improved without question? And that's the focus of this bill package. The second bill carried by myself, Senate Bill 321, Strong Start for CalWORKs Families. It provides families who enter the CalWORKs program with quality, affordable child care to bring stability during their transition into the system. Stage one child care will be authorized for 12 months or until the family transfers to what's called stage two, establishing continuous affordable child care for families. This measure, measure aligns stage one child care rules to all other subsidized child care programs in California, including stages two and stage three. That's a lot of legal uh, um, regulation ease that basically says providing continuous child care is important for the child's transition into any child care setting. And we don't want to nickel and dime a family to death and create a start and stop situation with their child care experience. The third bill is AB 324 by Assemblymember Agriar Curry, Child Care Professional Development Act. AB 324 creates guidelines for the early care and education professional development and retention system to strengthen, recruit, and retain the ECE workforce. What we know to be true is that making sure that children have access to a caring, well-trained cha child care provider who is confident in the, her own position, who is paid a wage that allows her to stay in the early care and education system is what creates a quality environment. Uh, the Women's Caucus has been uh, the proud supporters of our state's ECE system for a number of years now. We've made it a budget priority. And you know, sisters, we can take credit for making sure that the ECE system has received the investments it has um, over these more recent years in our effort to reestablish and to infuse necessary dollars into a system that for many years was drained dry. So I'm proud to stand with my colleagues as we talk about the legislative priorities for this year in the area of early care and education. Next, my colleague, Assemblymember Eggman, will talk about our health and safety priorities.